When we started the hot zone, the idea was to only go to armed conflict zones. But when Iran announced its plan to resume their nuclear research, it set off alarm bells in the West. Much of Iran's image at the time had been colored by the remarks of its president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, his doubts about the Holocaust, and calling for Israel's destruction. Many considered him a radical and didn't want him pushing ahead with a uranium enrichment program. When we went to the country, we wanted to make sure that we could show a much larger dimension of the country, that it wasn't just this issue, and that it wasn't just radicals. What we found when we went there is that there was a huge middle class, a large middle class that disagreed with everything their government was doing, that they wanted a more moderate stance toward the West. People like to have a relationship between uh, your country and us, but uh, government has uh, lots of problems. I mean, these days, I don't know if you heard about it, that Mr. Ahmadinejad uh, wrote a letter to the, I mean, IRIB and to the uh, culture and guidance minister that there should be no more Western music in our public or something. Well, that was something that it was really shocked us. You, you say that you're in the lottery because you would like to get a green card to America. Mm. But what do you know about America? <laughs> mm. not, not, not much, right? Not much. <laughs> so, so, so why not, do you want to go there? I, I, I really like your country. <laughs> Because, yeah, like, but, no, but why? No, yeah. in, in films, in like in, in the film, in the film, you know, it's not like the film. <laughs> I, <said that. laughs> I, know, I know that. We had some underground concerts. I mean, we performed underground. It was great. I mean, uh, it was for the first time that uh, we were playing, and we were not alone in that moment. I mean, because when we were playing, uh, it's only the band or or five or six uh, guys here. I mean, our friends. But uh, in, in that place, we were about uh, 100 and something people, and uh, we were not alone. And they were supporting us, and we would like it. But as with all countries, there are many layers underneath its political or public face. For instance, Iran has a huge drug problem, an estimated 2 million opium and heroin addicts in a country of 78 million. It's ironic, in an ultra-conservative Islamic country, where even talking about drugs is taboo. But with neighboring Afghanistan as the largest poppy producer in the world, it's almost inevitable. I meet a progressive doctor who developed an advanced but controversial treatment model, which includes a methadone clinic and a needle exchange program under the same roof. These are controversial programs even in the West, but what's most impressive, he convinced his government to let him try it. And here are the waiting room. The people come here, have a relax, have a kind of tea or smoke or a small amount of food, and wait for the service, maybe methadone or needle syringe exchange program or other kind of service. How many people come here every day? Uh, we can say 350 come here to have a methadone uh, tablet and 100 for the needle, needle and syringe exchange. 400 daily we can, 450. People use it as a role model because when you see in the queue of needle syringe exchange program, a lot of people suffer from pain, bad clothes, bad hygiene and health. And when you look at the method of maintenance queue, the people that they look better. better health, fantastic improvement, they got back to the job, they're back to the society. It was ingenious and it was really working in that area. But it was a difficult thing for him to convince the government to let him do this. And he still faces controversy and challenges against it every day. But to me, that story had a larger meaning. And the larger meaning was that if the government of Iran and individuals within that government see a problem that is really dangerous to them as a nation, to their own national security, they will consider creative and progressive ways of dealing with it. And this particular doctor was doing that. Now, couldn't that be extrapolated on a larger level? And that, yes, they may be willing to negotiate on nuclear enrichment and other issues of contention with the West because they're doing it, because they see it in their interest. Our time is running. I mean, for us in Iran, time goes very fast. We cannot wait. I mean, OK, I'm just telling the truth. You're getting old, you know? I'm 25 years old now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs>